Good morning. Today is Wednesday, December 6th, 2023. From the beginning of this week's Torah portion, Vayeshev, through the end of the book of Bereshis, the first book of the Torah, we learn about the story of Yosef and his brothers. And it is a very serious and relevant subject of sibling rivalry that spirals out of control at the very beginning. And the Torah tells us it stems, at least in part, from the favoritism that Yaakov showed to Yosef over the other brothers. And Yaakov gave a visible symbol to Yosef of this favoritism, the ksones pasim, this special coat. There are different understandings of what was special about this coat. Did it have many colors? Somehow it was special. And in addition to that, Yosef was in the habit of bringing bad reports from his brothers back to his father. And so the brothers, every time they saw him wearing this coat, their jealousy was provoked and their ire at Yosef was raised when he spoke ill about them. And it's only the fourth verse in our Parsha where the Torah says, Vayiru echov ki oso ohav avihem mikol echov. And it was that the brothers saw that Yosef was more loved by their father than any of the other brothers. Vayisnu oso. And they hated him. Velo yachru dabru l'shalom. Now, what are those last words? Velo yachru dabru l'shalom. There are several common translations. Velo yachru dabru l'shalom. They could not speak a kind word to him. Lo yachru dabru l'shalom. They could not speak peacefully to him. They could not speak to him on friendly terms. So it's expressing this distance between them uh, as a result of their jealousy, of his favoritism. V'lo yachlu dabru l'shalom. Rav Yonason Ibchitz points out in his commentary that the construction of that last phrase, those last four Hebrew words, it's an unusual construction. And if we were to try to give it the most literal translation, v'lo yachlu dabru le shalom. They were not able to speak him to peace. That doesn't seem to make sense in English. They they were not able, they could not speak him to peace. So what might that mean? So Rav Yonis and Ibjitz refers us to a mitzvah later in the Torah, another very applicable mitzvah in the, the book of Ayikra in the Parsha of Kedoshim, the Torah says, Lo sisne Do not hate your fellow in your heart. You should give constructive criticism to your fellow. And you should not bear a sin because of that. So you should not hate your brother. You should not hate your fellow. Clearly, in our parsha, the brothers are in violation of that. Also, they hated him. They were not able to, they, they were in violation of this. And the Torah says, Do not do that. Don't hate your brother. Don't hate your fellow. Now, most commentators understand this Pasuk in Vayikra to mean it's a prohibition. Don't hate. Don't hate. Hate is disastrous. Hate is dangerous. Don't hate. But the Rambam says something a little different. And what the Rambam says is very, very important. It's very relevant to us. And the difference is is quite, quite dramatic. The Rambam says, 
when a person sins against another or hurts another person, the injured party should not hate the offender and keep silent. What the Ramam is saying is, what the Torah means to say, Lo bilvavecha. don't hate your fellow and keep it in your heart and keep it inside. Rather, rather what you should do is, it is their duty to inform the offender and say to them, why did you do this to me? Why did you sin against me in this matter? That's why the Torah continues, don't hate your fellow in your heart, rather give constructive criticism. And then, v'lo sisa love hate, you will not bear the sin of holding this grievance inside. Because then, if you express it to the person, then if the offender repents and pleads for forgiveness, he should be forgiven. So the Ramam says, it's not just not to hate, it's not to hate and keep it bottled inside. Rather, you should find a way, obviously a way that's not going to lead to more hatred, to express it to the other person. You have hurt me. Explain what you did. Explain how you felt. Explain what happened. In the hope that that will lead to resolving the problem. Just coincidentally, yesterday I was listening to the radio and I was listening to a report about a remarkable public high school in Newton, Massachusetts. It's called Brown High School. And they have worked very hard to create a culture among young high school students with the motto let go, move on. Now those phrases, let go, move on, they, they repeat them every day during the announcements. They're printed on all the walls. It's something that gets discussed in class. Uh, um, everything they do in the school is geared towards this goal, let go, move on. Don't keep it bottled inside. Because if you keep bottle it, keep your hate bottled up inside and you don't express it, you will not be able to move on. Express it, discuss it, and then move on. Let go. Move on once you've expressed it. There was a student at this high school who said, and it's incredible the way a high school can adopt a motto as a theme and really have it seep into the students. This young student said, when you don't do that, when you keep it inside, it's like holding hot coals in order to burn the other person's hands. Is that remarkable? As I'm trying to burn you, and the way I'm doing it is by holding the, the hot coals in my hands. Of course, I'm the one that's going to be harmed. When I keep that hot coal, when I keep that anger inside of me, I'm the one that's going to be harmed. Says Rav Yonas and Ibchitz in applying this to our verse, if the brothers had been able to speak to Yosef, if they were able to say to him, we don't like it when you tell not nice stories about us, when you tattle on us to our father, it upsets us when we see you walking around with this special coat and none of us had that coat. If they could have spoken openly and honestly to Yosef about their sense of being put down, that Yosef was favored, and the fact that it, this is now the second generation because Yaakov had a favoritism of Rachel over Leah, and now Yosef, the son of Rachel, is being favored over the sons of Leah. So it's now a second generation of favoritism. Maybe Yosef would have been able to understand their feelings. Maybe it would have made him a little more modest, a little more thoughtful. But lo yachlu dabru shalom. They could not speak 
speak him to peace. They could not bring themselves to say the words that might have led to peace. Those who hate, says the Ramban Nachmanides, tend to hide their hate in their heart. And we have with this insight one of the most important ideas the world has to teach us, and it is something that we are facing right now in our lives. One of the Torah's great insights, that speech, conversation, is a way of conflict resolution. And the breakdown of speech is often the prelude to violent revenge. Now, conversation does not in and of itself end conflict or resolve conflict. You could have two people who are open with each other They may still have clashing desires. They may still have competing claims. They may just not like each other. There is no law in the universe that says that people will always get along, no matter what they do. But when there is conversation, at least we recognize another person's humanity. It allows us hopefully, to engage in role reversal, to imagine myself in the other person's position. To be able to look at a situation from another point of view. Once we're fighting violently, that's virtually impossible. Israel tried this for years with Hamas to speak, offering economic betterment, offering more jobs, offering a better standard of living for the people of Gaza. For years, Israel has offered this, using words to try. And on October 7th, we saw their response. So it's not always possible. And it's not always the moment to only use words. And what Israel has to do now is to remove those who will not use words and find someone else. Find some other entity to eventually speak to, honestly, openly. The problem, of course, is right now, nobody has any idea who or what that is. But the Torah is very clear in teaching us, and our sages were very, very eloquent in explaining to us the the dangers, not only of Lashon Hara, of evil speech, negative speech. The power of language has the ability to destroy trust and goodwill, but there's also evil silence, negative silence. Yosef's brothers might have spoken him to peace had they been open, had they been candid, had they been willing to communicate. Speech broke down at the very point where it was needed most. And we find that is exactly what is happening, what has happened in Israel today. So we have to remove that group that will not speak. And we have to find some other entity. However painful it is to speak about our hurt, it is more dangerous not to do so. Because here's the point. And I'll end with the words of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs. Eventually, inevitably, ultimately, speech is the path 
to peace. My friends, I wish you a great day, and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.